GTA 5 Online, the Cayo Perico Heist. This was released right at the end of 2020. It's now January 2021. This is a review of Grand Theft Auto 5 Online, the Cayo Perico Heist. This is the newest heist, released late 2020. It's, uh, there was two other heists before this one. The apartment heists, also called stilt house heist, and the casino heist. This Cayo Perico heist takes place on island. You have to buy a submarine in order to do the prep work to set yourself up for the heist on the island. It's a whole new expansion to the game. The first time you do it, you're stealing documents. Then, after that, you go back and there's drugs. You could you could steal drugs the first time. Drugs, and painting, gold. But when you go back to do it again, you're not stealing those documents anymore. There's uh, other things like a necklace, something of value, about a million dollars. And then whatever you carry in your bag, more players, more bags more money in the end. The casino heist made you buy the arcade to do the prep work and the apartment stilt house heist made you buy an apartment or stilt house which was all to rob the Pacific Standard Bank. So if you own an apartment you could do the apartment heists. You own the arcade, you can do the arcade heist, and if you own the submarine, you can do the Cayo Perico heist. I've done the heist myself twice. I've done it with other people a couple times. I'm going to review it. So the price of the submarine is actually pretty good. You can drive the submarine by yourself. It's kind of slow. But you can also fast travel. They updated it with this one where you can actually see where you're going to go to. Whereas if you were in the casino and you wanted to fast travel, it'll just tell you the location. But with the sub, you can see on the map where you're going to be spawning, which is good. It only costs $2,000. You can start a prep mission and then fast travel in your sub. So you don't have to travel across the entire map. It already comes with rockets. But then you can get missiles. The missile station shoots two missiles, one at each one. It takes a minute to cool down. They fly less than halfway across the map. And they fly too fast to be of any use for anything. I shot about 20 missiles yesterday trying to hit groups of people and I couldn't do it it's just impossible it moves too fast you can expand your map in the options or you can press down twice but it, your map will go back to normal size pretty quick so you gotta press down twice again by then you're already where you're at so it's better to go into settings and options and expand your map but it just flies too fast. By the time you try to target it down at something, you have no idea if you're going to hit or not. So I don't recommend the purchase of the missile station. The Aviso submarine, totally useless. They did add some gold treasure chest hunting but it's, it's not worth the money for any reason. If you own the Stromberg, 
which is that underwater car. You could park it in the sub if you don't have the Torador, which is the new underwater sub car. So you could do that. You're definitely going to have to buy the Sparrow helicopter because when you start a prep mission, you have to travel inland. The only way to do that is with the Sparrow, really. There's missions that are time sensitive too. So it's a hidden cost. You have to buy that helicopter. And you could fly over the sub and it'll land it inside. You can land other helicopters on the top, but a lot of times they'll despawn or fall off the sub. So overall, sub's good. The traveling it's good. Helicopters good. It's got bunch of rockets you could shoot. It's like better than the uh, buzzard. It's just like two rockets at a time. The sparrows. Pew, 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 pew. The prep missions for the Cayo Perico are pretty good. It's not like the casino heist where you're getting a five-star wanted level, breaking into the prison and stuff like that. You go to office buildings or... So overall, the rating for this is... It's easier to do this than it is to do the apartment heists. Stilt house heist to rob the bank. It's pretty elaborate, time-consuming heist with not much of a payoff in the end comparatively to the other two. The casino heist also takes a while to do all the setups and it's pretty brutal if you don't know what you're doing and have friends helping you. Um, so I'd put it somewhere in between the two. It's a little bit annoying having to go walk around the island and I guess it depends how you are if you get the friends to play with get on into the facility and go guns blazing or do it stealth however you're rolling uh, it's pretty good I like it but if you want to make money it may be easier to do the casino heist for some players. Whereas I was watching some videos where they're saying it's super easy to do this one, the Cayo Perico heist. Because you only got to do the couple prep missions, which are good. I mean, which are easy to do. And then you can make yourself solo a million dollars. That's the thing about this is you can do this one solo. Assuming you have the helicopter. If you don't have the helicopter, you're in big trouble. If you go down the list, check in the boxes for the update. Rockstar called it the biggest update to the game. Uh, if you check all them boxes, it's very accurate. Got a whole new island. Got sports car. It's got drift mechanic to it. Looks like a Ferrari. Motorcycle that pulls wheelies easily. New stealth helicopter. Bunch of missions. Prep missions. The sub fast travel in it, the rockets, the missiles, it's got the helicopter, you could spawn it right next to you, just like the buzzard if you're a CEO, and it shoots more missiles than a buzzard, plus there's a new radio station, more music, more single player missions, you're out in the world, there's new guns, there's a new shotgun, a new single shot handgun, Gotta find some guy sitting by one of the bars, get the key from him. 
There's a lot going on with this update. This update to the game also includes some cars so you can buy the stealth helicopter stealth annihilator it is similar to the Akula helicopter if you want to own a stealth helicopter the Akula seats four players This Stealth Annihilator is slower. It's kind of weak, as all helicopters are when they get shot some. And it's incredibly expensive, and it's not a Pegasus vehicle. So I would avoid buying it unless you. We're just rolling in the dough. It's better to buy the Akula. But, you know, it's your choice if you want it. Um, the This DLC, this update to the game also includes a new sports car, the a Grody Italy RSX which is a super fast sports car, it's top ranking got some understeer to it so it slides off the track and that rear end jumps out on you some kinda need to be a qualified race car driver to drive the thing but it's pretty good if you've got the three million dollars for it on top of that there's a couple other vehicles motorcycle that does wheelies really easily going to the island to do the prep work it's pretty annoying having to get caught so don't get caught you have to go halfway across the island to get to the gate and then you just walk through the gate there's cameras there's a guy up in the tower. There's other guys coming and going. You got to watch for that on your map. But that's the only way. So even if you keep getting caught there thinking you can't get through there, you can. Another thing you do is get a boat somewhere around. But uh, there's no way to get onto the backside of the island once you're in a boat. So you're going to want to get a boat at some point and get a scuba suit it's like eighty thousand dollars or and save it as one of your custom outfits so you can switch to it when you're on the island and you can swim around to the back side underneath the complex as a tunnel or you could steal a boat and do it It'd be helpful to have some rebreathers you could get those at the ammunition in the middle of the ammunition, there's a rack. If you walk up to that rack in the middle of the store, there's a rebreathers. So just buy a bunch of those. Let you breathe underwater until it times out. And then you automatically put on another one and another one. And then you drown when you run out. But you shouldn't. You don't, don't try to swim across the island with them. It's not what they're for. So the other thing about the island getting off of it is the best way once you're actually done with doing the heist is don't get into the green jeep, get onto a motorcycle. You can drive across the island in the jeep if you get lucky with not hitting trees. It can be done once you go out of the facility, go up over the hill. There is a path you can make but it's so easy to mess it up, hit a tree, get stuck, get shot at. So the best thing to do is get motorcycles. There's one that'll ride up, there's another one that'll ride around. There's other people who pull up on bikes. Get on those. 
because you could cut through all the roads and the other vehicles on the road and then the gate at the end and the two cars blocking it so it's the best way to cut the path from the facility where you're doing the heist back to the airport or to the uh, dock wherever you're going to escape when you're doing prep missions there's optional ones called disruption you should do those there's one where you gotta go around the map taking out helicopters which is gives you about ten minutes so you need the sparrow or other people inland able to get around there's also a uh, weapons one where you just go somewhere blow up some crates again time limit and then there's one where you uh, body armor something like that so I highly recommend you do it you don't necessarily have to if, once you know what you're doing but those three disruption missions are pretty easy pretty quick to do assuming you're able to get around and they help it's unbelievably so on the island what can happen is like the first time I played the mission you end up getting like three buzzards coming at you and then you get all the guards are shooting assault rifles at you and it doesn't take that many shots to kill you and then it takes a lot of shots to kill them so it's just asking yourself for trouble if you don't do those disruption missions As far as doing the heist, uh, there's the guards who are white dots, which you don't have to worry about. It's like doing the casino heist. So you can watch some people do like a stealth solo heist, and they'll walk around the place and they'll be what looks like guards standing there, but they'll just walk right past them while they're shooting the other guards. So I think they're red dots. There's red dots and white dots. In addition to that, though, there's cameras. So you got to watch out for that. Ultimately, what you need to do for this heist is get to the middle where the office is, and you either go up around the spiral staircase or there's an underground entrance in a tunnel on the back side of that building. And those are the two ways to get in. So you get in, you get whatever you're getting, and get out. You gotta get to key cards if you're gonna be opening doors. But you really don't need to do all that unless you want to go for the extra money for if there's a painting there or something like that. Because you could get all that money to fill your bag either at the dock or at the airport in the hangar the building next to it. On the side of the uh, airport there's a little tower. If you're going to be taken off on a plane you got to disable that so the little electrical box next to the building. So it's not a difficult heist necessarily so you got to know how to get in and get out. Getting out, best way is to use the bike. And just because you shoot some of the bad guys, they'll they keep respawning. So if you're gonna just sit somewhere and have a sniper rifle and think you're gonna clear the place out and be fine, they keep respawning. I did see some videos where people were like, "I killed everybody on Cara Perico." So I don't know how they're pulling that off, because I watched a friend of mine just spend like 20 minutes shooting guards non-stop respawning. So I don't know exactly how that works, but every time I've played it, they've always respawned. Even when I was down at the dock, they kept coming. 
prep missions for the Cayo Perico are pretty good. It's not like the casino heist where you're getting a five star wanted level, breaking into the prison and stuff like that. You kind of go to office buildings or warehouses. It's kind of small scale stuff. You're just taking out a few people and collecting something. It's pretty quick. It's a pretty qu easy way to make like a million dollars on the heist. Run around, do a prep mission here and there. and I think there's like five of them minimum that you have to do. So you can make a million dollars an hour basically if you're doing it. So pay wise, uh, you don't make a lot of money. If you bring three other players with you to do the heist, at the end it'll say, even if you don't bring them, at the end the screen will say you could have made five million, but you only made one million. The primary target. So I don't know how people are pulling $5 million because I've had all f four different players, three different, three more players on there and we got like $3 million maybe. So I don't know what's happening there. As far as leaving the facility, if you have uh, a, an assault rifle, and uh, a Rubio comes after you in his helicopter. You can shoot at that helicopter. If you shoot it enough, it'll fly away. But don't really recommend you do that unless you high rank, got a lot of body armor, a lot of health, some snacks, because you will get shot up not only by the helicopter, but by all the other guards who will come around at you. But that is one thing you can do, so... You see the helicopter just shoot at it. So the big question is, how much does the Cayo Perico heist pay? I'm talking about GTA 5 Online. Don't charge for the service. Don't have DLC to buy. The way they do it is they make the new sports car cost three million dollars sub cost two the sparrow helicopters two it's gets pricey making that much is kinda difficult especially for new players so how much does it cost so how much does the heist pay well, you could do it solo, which is a major win, because with the apartment heist, you're required to get three other players. You got to sit there and wait for three other people to join before you can do the prep work. A lot of the casino heist prep work you could do solo. You basically do all of it solo. You gotta get two cars, it's better to have two people. Stuff like that. Cayo Perico, you can do the whole thing by yourself. Make a million dollars. The uh, first document heist is a million. The necklace is a million. When you get your bag, it's like a quarter million. It depends what you grab. Goes like up to half a million maybe. I was just playing it the other day. We were at the airport airstrip about to get to the plane. Kept dying the whole way through. Restart so many times. And the other player I was with was just about to get into the airplane and we had like 1.5 million dollars he gets shot and dies right next to the plane as I'm climbing into it see the 
total go from 1.5 to 1.25. So he dropped half a million dollars in his bag. I just took off anyways. We already restarted it so many times. That's a big problem for both the casino heist and this one and the doing the Pacific Standard Bank one. Players are always dying. The thing about the heist department is when you get shot you'll see your total go from 1.5 to 1.3 to 1.2 and it'll stay at that. When you restart it'll be at 1.2 if it gets down to like 800, that it'll stay at that. Every time you restart. So that's the worst one. But an apartment costs like nothing. And they're kind of, it's, it's fun prep mission stuff, assuming you can get players to do it. So the Cayo Perico is preferable for new players, because you can do it solo. Pretty easy to do. Followed by the casino heist where you can make a lot more money. You can make like 1.5 if you get gold. Three players, you're in the vault, but you gotta know how to hack the vault doors in order to get all the gold. You don't want to leave the casino with not all the cards. Like, I've seen players go in there grabbing cash, and they're like, I don't know how to hack. And then they'll leave with, like, two carts. So dumb. That's the whole point. You just spent hours doing all the prep work, and now you're leaving half a million dollars behind. But, uh, yeah, Kyle Perico, profitable. Very expensive to do, though. It's not so bad for players who've been around because I make a million dollars out of my nightclub and passive income make a million dollars on a bunker sale while I'm doing prep work for a casino make another million make three million dollars in a day that's how I have so much money sold about seventy million dollars out of the bunker about seventy million out of the nightclub so that's how you make money in GTA buy a bunker buy the upgrades try to get players to help you do the deliveries wait until you get the big uh, tractor trailer trucks for the deliveries or you get the three insurgents to drop those off any other one you want to abort the game and restart it because either you're not going to have enough players you're not going to have enough time so from my experience you can get more than a million dollars every time you do the casino heist you give yourself 70%, 65. So you got to keep your other players at 15%. Maybe 20 if they've been helping you. I have got 1.5 out of the casino. I think I was doing gold. But uh, at the end of the Cayo Perico, it shows you get up to 5 million. So, it's assuming you get three other players and pay them all 15%. So, it's not something that I know how to do right now. But I have seen a couple videos where they're saying... I have seen a couple videos where they're showing... You can make, uh, like, the... Uh, you can get the target for 1.2 million grab a bag for another half million, 1.5 do that in like an hour or two which is better than trying to do the doomsday scenario
place in your bag for main objective. I have crafted special compartment for it. Portion, of course. from top to bottom. And remember, some connections have multipliers. You must experiment. You need exactly target voltage to bypass security. Perfect. I have the camera feed in front of me now. seconds.